the other day on YouTube, I watched uh, footage of last year's convention of the ATA, the, the state of the industry, they called it. And uh, I, I was kind of impressed. There was a very dynamic speaker on. That's what caught my attention. His, his name was Chris Spear. He's the new head of the ATA, relatively new. He's been the head of the ATA the last couple of years, but quite a good speaker. So it held my attention. So here's here's a guy, Chris Spear, hauls down a six-digit salary, and the ATA considers himself the voice of the American trucker. So I thought, well, you know, I'm not really familiar with this guy. This this name doesn't ring a bell for me. I can't think of him ever being the head of a trucking company anywhere. So I thought, oh, I, I'm going to research this guy because he's pretty good. I want to see who he is, really. I want to find out about him. Well, turns out he's been an executive at a couple of big corporations like Hyundai and Honeywell. And he's worked for a couple of U.S. senators. And he's never driven a truck for a living in his life. So here's the voice of the American trucker. He's never driven a truck for a living in his life. It struck me odd. I thought, well, why would the ATA want a guy like this? What has this guy got to offer the ATA? Well, it turns out what he's got to offer is Washington experience. He's a bit of a spin doctor. Now, spin doctor means he can, he can take a truth and twist it to his benefit. So it makes it look like uh, it works for his argument, the argument he's trying to present. So I listened to his, his spiel and I lost track of how many times Chris Spear mentioned that the ATA was all about safety, yet the ATA was against these California rest breaks that the state was imposing on its drivers. Why would, why would the ATA, who's all about safety, be against a rest break? Well, because it was either costing the money or the carrier had to pay the driver for the break money. When it came to setting up a few years ago, the, the basis for driver training, everybody in the industry wanted a minimum number of hours behind the wheel for new drivers. Everybody except the ATA. The ATA opposed that and pushed hard enough that they threw that part of the new driver training program out. So imagine a young guy or girl learning to drive a truck but doesn't really have to spend any time behind the wheel learning. It's all classroom time. The ATA supported this. The ATA wanted this. Why? Because it saved the ATA members money in training. It was cheaper for them to take a couple of new guys, throw them in the truck without very much training at all, and hope they kind of figured it out for themselves. It's just incredible. So how this is about safety I really can't imagine. Then he went on to say, he went on to talk about flying out to a carrier, an aircraft carrier, to visit his son and saying, you know, he watched this 18-year-old girl pilot an aircraft carrier and how impressed he was. And he was saying, the point of his argument was, if this 18-year-old girl can pilot an aircraft carrier, why isn't she allowed to drive interstate trucking? Because the ATA is trying to get this through Congress now. They want uh, truck drivers, 18-year-old truck drivers they can recruit right out of schools to be able to drive cross-country because it benefits the trucking companies, of course. So he says, you know, here's this 18-year-old girl, and they trust her with an aircraft carrier, but they don't trust her to cross state lines with a truck. Well, hell, Chris, you said it yourself. It's all about the training. In trucking, that 18-year-old girl would have a driver trainer and then thrown to the wolves or thrown out the road with somebody else that has no experience on her own in a truck and hoping it all works out. Do you think they did that with her in an aircraft carrier? You bet your bottom dollar they didn't. She was surrounded by professionals the whole time. There's a big difference. You can't draw that card. And, and here he is saying that, well, he's, you know, if we recruit 18 year olds right from school to drive interstate, it'll probably save them from getting involved in drugs. Well, there's a hell of a jump there too. Let's face it. The ATA is after 18 year olds to help them fill the driver shortage that they created themselves by paying their drivers poorly. So 
toss that argument out the window, but there's another spin, another twist that he likes to put on an argument. And then he played the veterans card, and he, he, he bore this in relation to this young girl in the aircraft carrier too. Now think back to the, the O.J. Simpson trial, and um, Johnny Cochran played what they called the race card. Well, Chris Spear likes to play the veteran card. So he, he spent 15 or 20 minutes praising veterans and stuff like that, and what good drivers they were. And you know, yes, that's true. Yes, they're a very responsible group. Yes, a lot of them are highly trained. But the real reason the ATA likes veterans is because veterans come with an excellent pension after they retire from the service, from the forces. So they've got this excellent pension to fall back on and the ATA members just don't have to pay those guys very much because they're living off their pension, their retirement pension from the military. So they don't need to make a whole lot off trucking. And that's why the ATA truly likes veterans. It's another group they can kind of take advantage of because they can say, well, you know, they butter them up. Oh, we need your experience. We need your expertise. We need your training. And we really don't want to pay a whole lot of money for it. So that always offends me too. So here's, here's Chris Spear, head of the ATA. He likes to think of lease operators and owner operators. He refers to them now as independent contractors because he doesn't want to think of them as employees at all because, of course, that would cost money. So he's deliberately twisting the terminology of owner operators and lease operators as independent contractors when they're not anything close to that at all. And something else the ATA supports and Chris Spear supports is the development of autonomous trucks. So how can that be the voice of the American trucker when he's trying to eliminate the drivers? It's not about the truckers, it's about the money. ATA, voice of the American trucker? <laughs> it's the voice of packing money into the pockets and the bank accounts of the elite few in Washington and the elite few that own these huge carriers. So this is meant to give you drivers some perspective. You can't believe a word these guys say because these guys are out for themselves, period. They're not out for you, they're not out to help you, they're out to use you to make as much money as they possibly can for themselves. And I have a problem with that. These guys are not the voice of the American trucker. These guys are the voice of guys that are lining their own pockets. At the, at the end of the day, why is the ATA got this guy in there? Because he's a spin doctor for Washington. He knows he's never driven a truck before. He never had to make a living driving a truck. But it shows you the way trucking is going these days. It's not about truck drivers. And you never saw the day 20, 30 years ago when uh, the trucking companies were headed by anything but truck drivers that have built companies up. Now they're headed by people that are politicians or have no experience in trucking. They may be interested in business or they know how to get shareholders off the stock market and that type of thing, but they aren't really truck drivers anymore running these big trucking companies. And here you've got proof of this. Here's the ATA's top guy, never driven a truck for a living in his life, but he knows his way around Washington. He knows how to manipulate the truth. He knows how to twist it to their advantage. He knows how to get stuff through Congress that will benefit the ATA corporations so they can make more money. It's not about the drivers. It's about them making more money, lining their pockets, and often at the driver's expense. And that's a big part of the problem I have with the ATA. Anyway, I'm starting to warm up, so I better change the subject. And, Something that will cool me off and getting heated about the ATA is a, a story I remember from many years ago. And uh, there were a couple of us that got loads of ice cream out of, the, out of the Ontario region. I believe it was Baskin Robbins. Anyway, we were trucking this stuff to Vancouver, to a, to a terminal in Vancouver. So there was another guy. We, I, I picked up, I loaded the stuff cranked down my reefer to freeze. I had a pretty good reefer too. I had an ice cream trailer is what they called it. It was really heavy insulation on a great day and great trailer. Headed for Vancouver. I didn't run into anybody I knew along the way. But when I got to the terminal in Vancouver, there was another guy out of Ontario ahead of me going through the gates with a load of ice cream. So he checked in with security 
he rolled ahead and security came out, cut the seal on the trailer, and the driver opened the doors so he could back into the dock and unload this ice cream. But what had happened en route somewhere along the way was these, these old Thermokings worked on, there was like a solenoid switch and the things could flip and the solenoid switch had broken and instead of traveling on high speed cool like this driver thought he was doing, he was traveling on high speed heat Back then, we didn't even have remotes on the side of the trailer that you could see in the mirror. You had to get out and check your unit to make sure it was doing what you wanted it to do. So this guy pulls ahead of me, and he's maybe 100 feet ahead of me, opens the doors, and is swept off his feet by a solid flow of melted ice cream and little pieces of cardboard here and there from the cartons that had gone soft. The ice cream had all melted. He cooked the stuff on the way to Vancouver. The, the Niagara Falls of Neapolitan was so strong when he cranked open the doors, it knocked him off his feet. He was sitting on his butt in the parking lot, covered in strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate. And it even washed back, oh, I don't know, maybe 100 feet. It, it got on the wheels of my tractor on my steering axle. That's how, how far this mess was. But, man, it was, it was something to see, I tell you. He opens the doors, and he just opened them like this, just expecting to see a wall of ice cream, cardboard containers and was just hit by this mass of Neapolitan because all the colors had melted and run together. I hope to God that guy had his insurance up to date because <laughs> the load was a complete write-off. But I never saw anything quite like that before. It was something. Keep the rubber side down. Stay safe. Check your unit temperature every once in a while if you're running reefer. And I'll see you on the backhaul.